that's my art. <laughs> is that your art? Oh, wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, that looks great. That's my sovereign woman painting. <laughs> What's the focus of your art? Um, let's see. Well, so the more recently um, I started doing this, actually, I don't know if you could see this. This is, uh, can you see it's got glass, broken glass? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That looks so really this, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. This was um, a series I did. I have a bunch of these. That's what I've done most recently, and that was more around, um, it symbolizes like the breaking of the glass and the putting it back together. It's just, it's what we're, we're always getting shattered in our lives and having mm. to pull it back together. But what most people don't realize is that's the silver lining. It's, it can be so beautiful, the lessons you get from that. Hi everyone, welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. Today I have an incredible show for you guys. I am joined by somebody who has just blown my mind uh, ever since I actually connected with her. I've been really looking forward to this. Her name is Nicole Keating and she has just done so, so much. She's an artist. She helps entrepreneurs at the moment build their lives and get connected with themselves. She is also helping people find their wellness and find the, their true self. And she's in the middle of writing a book. She has hosted and, and launched like 87 podcasts. Yes, you heard that right. 87 <laughs> podcasts. I'm going with it by just doing this one podcast, but she's done 87. She's, she still looks amazing somehow. I don't know how. Um, and she is just incredible. She is working on so many different things, um, including launching a new supplement and uh, setting up a pop-up trailer that goes all around the country where she can do pop-up interviews and pop-up events. It's just amazing what she has been up to. So with that, let's welcome our guest for today. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Wow, what a great introduction. I love your energy. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, seriously, uh, your intro, uh, this is just like the short version of the short version <laughs> in this time that we have. But yeah, no, absolutely. Lovely to have you on. <laughs> thank you for having me. Just, yeah, I love what you're up to in the world. So I'm always, always excited to show up and create, co-create together. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So Nicole, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, what you do and how you got started on this journey? Ooh, well, let's see. Um, my business is called The Art of Epic Wellness and it was sort of the artist version of wellness. Um, so I've been a painter and um, an artist for a long, long, long time. That's sort of my humble beginnings. And um, I have sold my work commercially and I've done um, art therapy. And so, I mean, that's where the art came in. But um, I guess I could go back and tell you um, really where this journey started, where the journey started of like self-improvement and growth. I have to go back a little further and say, and it's it's a little bit sad, but it's been um, a long time, and I like to call it my silver lining, right? So um, about eight years ago, eight and a half years ago now, um, I had a boyfriend who I'd been with for four years, and we were, you know, crazy, running around the country, having fun, doing our thing, kind of living in our, our selfish world and, you know, in that space. And he actually um, very suddenly and, and pretty tragically passed away. Oh, I'm um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, you know, and I, I mean, I can talk about it. It's been it's been a long time now, and but at the same time, it's there's so many lessons, and um, you know, in the moment, it was like I call it my ground zero. You know, we all know about nine eleven. That was my personal ground zero. It was just a disaster. My life sort of falling apart and having to pick myself up and rebuild my life. And you know, with his passing came so many lessons, and you know. Um, having to decide like who I was going to be going forward. And of course I was kind of a hot mess for the first two years, really, really grieving. And anyone who's gr has been in a grieving process knows that it's hard on your body and you know, you're just trying to get by. And I, I have, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but he's one of my heroes and he really helped to pull me through that time is Dr. Wayne Dyer. Are yes. you familiar with Yeah. Yes, and Deepak I've, I've Chopra. heard about him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there was this CD that my friend Jen Sagali, who she's awesome too, um, 
she gave me the CD. She's like, just put this in your car, you know, and, and when it was about three months after he passed and it was this CD about um, Wayne Dyer and Deepak were sharing how you, how you have the power to shift your life, how you have the power to manifest anything in your life. And every time I would get in my car and I'd just be a mess and then that would come on and it just kind of started to imprint that I could create, like I could pull myself out of this disaster and create a better life. So that was sort of the impetus. So of course, Wayne Dyer, like, you know, it just felt like he was my best friend, you know, talking to me in his voice um, every time I got in the car. And um, I ended up going to see him about 10 months later. And that just jump started this desire, right? Just wow. to hear what I was learning and to help other people. And when you get your mind off of yourself and your selfish needs and, and your struggle and your pain, and you put it on helping someone else is when you can heal. So that was when I started my art therapy business, which was about it was about three, three or four years of uh, working with autism, Alzheimer's, um, dementia, stroke, doing, working with people that were really going through challenges and, and um, you know, getting to be in a moment with them, just super present and helping them to create something beautiful and feel like they, um, it was really beautiful because people think, oh, they're gone, you know, and no, the, the light still turns on when we create and it was just, it was a really powerful experience to do that work. Um, and then, yeah. And then, so let's see, then how did I, I got into wellness cause I started to, my body started to break down a little bit, um, after three or four years of grieving or, you know, I just started to have some weird symptoms. Um, and I started to look into it, which was crazy. So I don't know if you've heard of like taking the red pill, but you know, you, um, when you start to dig and uh, the onion layers come off and you're like, oh, yeah. what do you mean? What do you mean there's fluoride <laughs> in the water? What do you mean there's mercury in my teeth? You know, that kind of thing. So I, I took the dive <laughs> into the deep hole and um, I guess the rest is history. I guess you could ask me whatever comes up next. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fantastic. That's, yeah. uh, that's an amazing story. And uh, yeah. By the way, for the audience, just want to highlight all these pictures you're seeing in the background are actual Nicole's own art, right? They, they, they are done by Nicole herself. They're not just something she bought and she's hanging on the walls. They're actually done by Nicole herself. Thank you. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have art coming out of every corner. I have to, I had some, I had to store <laughs> when I recently moved. So yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, but yeah, no, incredible story. And uh, thank you for sharing that. Really, really powerful. And uh, just, again, stressing the point that we have the power to change our lives. It's just a matter of knowing how, finding out how, and obviously digging deep and, and, finding out what is it that you need to work on and how do you actually go ahead and, and make those changes. So yeah, very, very powerful message. And thank you for sharing that, Nicole. Um, I just want to know, first of all, a little bit more about how you worked with so many different um, people. You, you talked about people with autism, people with Alzheimer's um, and, and um, you know, other, other sort of uh, issues. How did you work with them in terms of art and what was art therapy all about? I've never heard of that before. So I'm just curious to know what's that about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the particular um, type of therapy I was doing was called nematherapy, which is mnemonics. Like it's a lot of movement and storytelling and they're okay. um, there. So depending on the severity, like I had a kid kiddo who was in a, a wheelchair with, um, like he could barely move his arm and he had pretty severe autism and CP. So for him, you know, literally it was, um, you know, sticking it in the paint and moving it and I'm guiding him. And um, every time you cross the center of the body, going from the left to the right or back and forth, you're using the right and left side of the brain. So mm. when we're doing, so it was, it was kind of directed painting therapy is a little different than emotional art therapy. It's, it's kind of a, its own thing, but most people don't know what it is. So they, like, you know, when you hear art therapy, you know, that's a thing, but um, it was actually sort of a, a direct. Um, so we would use, so what was really cool with the people who had Alzheimer's and dementia, the storytelling was really powerful because they would go. So when you have Alzheimer's and dementia, it's sort of like the brain, um, it kind of goes back, 
backwards. Like, so they'll remember things from their childhood and from growing up. And I mean, they'll remember those things, but they may not remember who their daughter is or who, you know, or who their husband is because it's some people, it's like they shed the years. That's how it, and I've seen it happen many, many different ways. Some people lose their speech, but they have their comprehension. Some people lose their comprehension, but they have great vision, sight, hearing, it just depends, but it was really fascinating to hear the stories that would come out um, as we were painting with some of them. So wow. with the autism, um, the autism, it was more, it helped them to develop. It helped them to um, have better motor skills and better coordination and better communication. Sometimes with autism, there's a disconnection between, like you, we see that a lot. It's like there's not a human human connection as much as some kids have right so you're building that you're building that rapport you're building um the skills so with the alzheimer's and dementia we were sort of preserving their skills because obviously those are degenerative diseases right yeah. and with the with the autism i mean i believe you can heal most things because um and that's like the holistic version of things most people don't realize that so, so this actually is perfect. It plays into why I went into wellness. So I'm doing all that and I'm seeing um, results. But with the seniors, I was conflicted because as I was learning about wellness, I was noticing at the, I worked at a lot of senior centers um, and I was noticing what they were eating. It was garbage, just absolute garbage. They're drinking Kool-Aid. They're eating, you know, process, all processed food, lots of sugar, which creates like fungal infections and candida. And mm. um, with Alzheimer's and dementia, it's really easy to get dehydrated. So I was just, as I was learning about health and wellness, I was realizing, whoa, there's a huge disconnect here. Um, I felt really compelled to like educate families and, and I felt um, out of alignment. You know, when you know something's not right and you, and you can't always do something about it because obviously there's politics, right? You're talking about a, a senior home. If I go in there and I'm like, well, this is what I think and blah, blah, blah. Like I may not have, be working there next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So it bothered me and it was a growing misalignment for me. So it became so much of a misalignment that I decided I need to share this message with the world. So that's mm -hmm. when I got a, um, I was listening to Miracle Morning and I was listening to Hal's podcast. You know how Elrod? Yeah. Amazing man. And he, um, I ended up hiring him as a coach and deciding to launch my podcast. So that was sort of the reason um, I ended up jumping out of that was, was because of the misalignment, which has always been sort of my compass now. <laughs> it's like, does this feel aligned or is this getting out of alignment? Cause that happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think I go through a, that a lot. Uh, and we talked a little bit about that before as well, before we started recording, um, where you start to hit burnout. Yeah. And you talked about finding balance between obviously your masculine and feminine. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, since we're actually on the topic, maybe you'd like to go deeper there and just talk to us a little bit more about how we can find balance, uh, you know, and, and how we can make sure that we're not hitting the burnout. Mm, yes, absolutely. There's, there's several ways I've learned about finding balance. Um, one of the more recent ones, because so the last season of my podcast was truly an exploration for myself because you said, like I, I did 87 shows. So the second, first year, it was surely like, woo, so excited. <laughs> I didn't care. I was just going for it. And it was super fun. And the second year I was like, oh my gosh, like I started to feel the, you know, um, when you have a podcast, it's as you know, right. Or a show, a video show, there's a lot like just the show itself is the tip of the iceberg. The interview is so fun, but it's the tip of the iceberg yes. and all of the production behind it. And right. Um, and then all of the social media, all the things that it was just catching up with me. So the last season of my show, it was all about rituals and habits. Um, and I was interviewing a lot of entrepreneurs about their wellness rituals and their habits. And for me, that was the way I was able to maintain that show that second year because I had a good set of habits and rituals in the morning, um, especially. And um, I, so I think that's the huge piece um, for maintaining balance is making sure that you cap your, your the beginning of your day and the end of your day with powerful, uh, supportive rituals and 
I would say just from a general basis, what I learned after interviewing like 40 people around this amazing people like John Lee Dumas and, you know, um, Sean Stevenson and Hal and, you know, just, and a lot of awesome women, um, that, you know, some form of gratitude or prayer is like super important because we can just slip so easily into the me, me mode. I call it like the me, me, me. And what do I need? And why is this happening to me? And it's just the, the antidote to that is being yeah. in service and gratitude and, and, and prayer. Right. And just knowing that you're connected, actively trying to connect to something um, out, you know, that's inside and outside of you that makes you feel more whole. Um, and then also not um, getting on the electronics or the Facebook or any of that. That's been super important. Um, not, not doing any of that before I just have some me time in the morning to have, you know, what do I want to journal it out or just to, to drop into my plans. Right. Um, and then something that's evolved is before I was, I was definitely trying to do a lot. Um, <laughs> now I really, it's like, what three things am I doing to move the, you know, you hear that, but if you can actually practice that yeah. and you know what, what those three big things are that you're moving forward, that's huge. And I use the, um, what's it called? The productivity journal. It actually is five things, which is nice because, but those three things, I love that journal. I don't know if you've seen that journal. Have you? I haven't actually, no. Oh, where is it? Oh, I'm going to have to leave the screen if I go get it. But it, it's called the, um, the Productivity Journal. And it was created by, oh, what are their names? Alex and um, they did another, the Five Minute Journal. Have you, have you heard of the Five Minute Journal? Yeah, okay, I might have actually two, heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two great resources. The five minute journal is a gratitude journal, okay. but the, the productivity journal is taking the principles of habit and creating, you know, solid habits and, and actually getting stuff done. And it, they put it into a journal. So I highly recommend both of those, but the productivity journal is the one I continue to use because that's where I need the most help. Like I'm totally creative artist. I think of ideas like, like I swear, like 70 times a minute. So I need to be able to stay focused. Um, and then as far as balance as a female, something that has been absolutely profound for me um, this year, because I was out of balance. The last three or four months of my show, I was out of balance. I was trying to get a, a course going and I, was, um, and I was learning and I was sharing about balance, right? So that's when you start to go, we were talking about the misalignment before, right? When I started to feel the misalignment with the art therapy or the nematherapy that I was doing. Um, and then it happened again with the podcast at the end, I started to get misaligned because I was burning out and I was talking about not burning out <laughs> and I was talking about wellness and I was talking about habits and rituals and I was starting to burn out. So it was really interesting. The show actually got shut down and um, it, it got, it got banned off of iTunes, I believe because I got deeply into, um, the last couple shows were about, um, non GMO, uh, activism. And I was like getting hardcore into the activism wow. and I believe that may be why, but I will tell you this, like mm. how my boyfriend passing away was a silver lining of me valuing my life and moving forward with my life. Um, that was a very necessary break I needed. So what happened was I fought it. I freaked out. I fought it. And I was like, Oh my God, what do I do? I was calling everyone. And is it working? It's no, it's not working in the UK. It's not working anywhere. What's going on? Um, for about two weeks and I just couldn't, and I couldn't get anyone on the phone at iTunes. It's sort of the wild, wild west over there. Um, and then about two weeks in, I said, well, what would I tell my coaching client right now if they were going through this? Cause I was a mess. I mean, you've, we've all been in a place where we're freaking out about something and we're in our sympathetic nervous system and things aren't working. So I said, you know, what would I tell my myself if I was a client? And I said, I would tell my client to let go, to take two or three weeks off, to just take care of yourself and come back strong. Right? So I did that. And I, all of a sudden, three weeks, two weeks turned into three, turned into six. And I was like, oh, you know, like the, <laughs> the heavens parted and the music played and the angels. Because I was, realized I was in burnout. And until I gave myself that space, I couldn't, like my creativity started to come back online. And, 
I just felt so much more energized and I started getting more into spirituality again and just exploring, like being like a curious little kid again and just exploring like, okay, like I could just take a break for a little bit and like figure out what I really want. Right. And so that was, and then that parlayed into the next lesson, which was uh, letting go is the way to find flow. Like sometimes when things aren't working. Right. So, yeah. and I ended up doing a challenge, which was super fun and successful. And then I was like, I don't know what I'm doing next. So I am actually going to be launching that challenge again soon because it was really powerful because people tend to just continue to add, add, add. They think the answer to like, if they're not understanding that, like if they're confused and they don't know what they want and then, Oh, Oh, this over here shows up. Okay. Let me just add that. And let me add this. And we forget to let go. If we're going to add, we have to let go because otherwise then you just, you're spinning plates and you're in a state of overwhelm, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. So this, this challenge that you did, Nicole, what was the actual focus of the challenge? Yeah. Just, so, letting, um, just letting go. Was, was that the focus? Yeah. So in, in different areas. So it was okay. a five day challenge. And um, what's unique about this, because I realized that we, when we create something, we have to ask ourselves, how, how do I like to create? How do I like to show up? Right. So I've found that I like to podcast. I like to video. I like to riff. Right. So for me, I actually have run it twice now, but I've done, di I've done it a little differently each time because I'm an artist. I don't want to do the same thing over and over. So I find that for me, I do like to add, you know, little things. So, um, one of the let go, like an example is, um, one of the activities we did was closing open loops. Like, so how many, we've all been at a seminar maybe where they're like, okay, make a, put your finger in the air and make a C and then put your finger in the air and make a C. And that's just like a representation of all the open loops we have like out there. So there, one of them might be, um, somebody you promised to email an introduction or you totally forgot. And it's been like in your head going, <laughs> and that's an open loop and that's taken up bandwidth. Right. So, yeah. or it might be, um, you know, this, uh, box of papers that you have in the corner that you just, it just drives you nuts every time you walk by it or, um, uh, thinking of one that we have right now, there's a um, electrical outlet that needs a new plate, right? Just these little things. So it was an exercise running them through through these um, different open loops they might have. And so then they, then we all shared in Facebook like what we let go of, what we what we got done, right? So that was one example. Um, and so I did it in different categories, right? Five days, and then people would share and uh, share how they were feeling, and it was super fun. And awesome. uh, the goal was to feel just like a little bit lighter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That, that sounds incredible. So Nicole, you talked about habits and rituals and you obviously help entrepreneurs, you know, establish habits and rituals that allow them to live wholesome, holistic lives so they can be connected with themselves and also achieve wellness. And I'm just curious would it be, will you be willing to go in a, like a quick fire round where I ask you a few questions about your habits and your rituals? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. So Nicole, what's the one habit that you can't live without? Really, really amazing water. Okay. Talk to, talk more. <laughs> I know that sounds, talk more. <laughs> I want to know more. Okay. So I realized, so I talk about the 80, 20 rituals and, um, most people they're like trying to do these really obscure things that will make their life a little bit better. But if you think about it, what do we do more than anything else? Well, this is one, right? What's that? Yeah. We're breathing, right? So you want to have really good, clean air. And then we're drinking water. Like water is what's going into your coffee. Water is what's going into your smoothie. Water is going into your body constantly. So um, in the U.S., a lot, of, uh, a lot of towns actually fluoridate their water. And if people are just drinking the tap water, they're getting all these extra chemicals. There's, uh, it's been tested 57 contaminants in the U.S. water here. Wow. So if you're drinking, so imagine there's two things. Being hydrated is super important because if you're dehydrated, which 70% of Americans are dehydrated, um, your energy is 30% less. Wow. 30% less. You're walking around dehydrated, 30% 30 30 less energy right off the bat. 
Wow. Secondly, if you're in consuming all of these toxins, yeah. they're going into, so we have receptor sites all over our body. We have receptor sites for hormones. We have, you know, but we were talking about the hemp. So we have receptor sites for um, plant diols like CBD and, and other phytocannabidiols, right? We have um, basically all of our bodies. So it, in those receptor sites and in our cells. So if um, you're getting these tiny nanoparticles of chemicals in all of your little receptors, then your receptors are not going to get, um, you know, that vitamin B in there or that magnesium that they need. So your body becomes unable to function at its optimal level. So uh, I drink um, this amazing um, spring water. It's called Mountain Valley Spring Water is my favorite. It's delivered in glass, so there's no plasticides coming in, right? So okay. it sounds crazy, but to me, that's that's my number one. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> that you, you sold it to me. So, you know, that's incredible. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, I better start checking the water here in the UK, actually. That... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds pretty scary. Okay, so what's the one habit that actually allow, you think allows you to perform at your highest level? Okay, so you mean like if I were to be speaking or what, what would be an activity that, that I'm trying to do on my highest level? So let's say, for example, you are doing your art. Mm. Okay. So, um, that would be getting quiet before like, um, getting quiet before I do whatever it is and deciding what the intention is I'm putting into that thing. So, and it can just take a minute or two. Um, you don't necessarily need to go meditate for an hour. I mean, I know people that do that and it's amazing to do that as well, but you just, um, so for example, if I'm talking to someone, um, a teammate about the head, oil or I'm talking to someone about coaching like it does not help anything to go in there go from this to that and you know just be in this kind of frazzled like and I have a lot of energy right but the uh the the my energy could be frenetic or it could be grounded and powerful right yeah so um that's what I mean is before I do anything just getting quiet getting in my body and deciding how I'm going to show up right now. Mm. But I'd say that's the number one. I love it. I because absolutely love it. That, yeah, it lets you, it allows you to just drop in and decide how, what it is, how it is that you're going to be showing up for whatever it is. So if you're going to be painting, just, you know, letting go of whatever's happening outside of this moment. Um, I have this trick, I call it painting the edges, and I think you can use it for anything. Um, so sometimes when you look at a white blank canvas, you're like, Oh, I got to go do my laundry. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like, Oh, it's scary. Right. And it's like, it's like any, or looking at a blank screen when you're trying to write a book. Right. Um, so I just, what I do when I start painting, I'll take a brush and I'll dip it in black and I'll paint the edges of the canvas black. And by the time I'm done, I'm in the painting mode. So you can use it with writing. You can use it with anything. It's just getting started and not putting any pressure on creating something great. You're just getting started. So yeah, it helps a lot. Cool. And are you familiar with Brandon Burchard's new book called High Performance Habits? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, I actually have it in my Audible um, lineup. So I haven't listened to it yet, but it's next in the, in the queue. <laughs> okay, cool. So that was my actual book for January. And in there, you know, spoiler alert, by the way, since you haven't actually listened to it yet. Um, but Brendan actually talks about something, a, a practice. Essentially, it's a, it's a daily practice that, that he, uh, you know, talks about in the book. And it's about taking care of the transitions in our life where we go from one task to the next task or from one situation to another situation. And there's a moment of transition. And what he talks mm -hmm. about there is to release the tension that you're carrying from before and set the intention for what you want to achieve in the next activity, in the next task or in the next situation. And mm -hmm. it's just so powerful. And again, he talks about just taking a minute to close your eyes, you know, release all the tension that you've been carrying so far and then set the intention of what is it that you want to do with the next activity or the task. So mm -hmm. really, really powerful. And it was just aligned with what you were saying. So I thought I'll just bring that up. 
Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Cause that, that sounds a lot like what I'm doing, what I was doing. That's mm. cool. Yeah. And so you're, more, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're practicing one of the high performing habits already without even knowing about it. So that's really powerful. So it, it all works, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Brendan and I are, yeah, we're buddies. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I do love him. I've been to uh, several of his events. He's amazing. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So audience, um, if you are interested, check out High Performance Habits. Um, it's an incredible book and uh, I would highly recommend it. Awesome. So what's the one habit that you will like to add to your life? Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, I would say, so one, one of the habits I, I guess I'm actively working on because I just moved about four months ago and I just gotten settled in a new place, but you know, I really had a deeply ingrained habit. Um, cause I lived on the beach and I would like, so part of my workout routine was walk, I would walk to the beach every day and it was so cool and it was so deeply ingrained and I don't have the beach anymore here where I am. So I'm work, I'm actively working on finding. So for me, it can't just be like, so when, so I think one of, it's like a, a good side of being an artist, but it also is like, okay, Nicole, like, um, I think everything has to be beautiful, right? So it's like, yeah, I don't know if I want to walk around this. I mean, the neighborhood's nice, but the beach is beautiful and magical. So I think it's um, finding that my new um, workout habit, whatever that is, I think I just, I need to find someone that I'm super aligned with or find the right workout studio or, yeah, so that's actually you know, I know we all need an exercise regimen and I, I've just been kind of going to my husband's gym and it's just, it's not beautiful. It doesn't make me inspired. <laughs> Which is so funny, but I know what I'm motivated by. So I have to, I'm excited to, because I have to, but the language we use is important, right? So I am excited to find what my aligned exercise routine is going to be over here in my new life. So yeah, that's really what I'm working on because I know how important that is and I just haven't found my stride yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> okay, so my final question on, on the topic of habits. What's the one habit that you find people struggle with the most when they come to you? Um, stress. Hmm. Yeah, managing stress. I, I think it's truly disrupting. Uh, they're stuck in fight or flight. You know, uh, we talked a little bit about this before we got on, but, um, yeah. and we know like entrepreneurs are like, woo, go, 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 go. And, um, we're stressed. Um, we're stressed at a, it's on so many different levels. We're stressed emotionally by like, really, we're actually getting more input, um, than we would have gotten in one day, I think, than we would have gotten in a lifetime. So we are on the cellular level. We're stressed by the stuff that's in our food, our air, our, our water, whatnot. Um, and also by the things we can't see, like the EMF waves from our um, microwaves, from our computers, from our cell towers and our Wi-Fi. Like, it, I believe that that is going to be one of the um, profound, uh, you know how like smoking was this, this big deal like many years ago or, and like, or like sitting, you yeah. know, sitting too much has really been a big deal recently. Like get your standing desk and all this stuff, right? I believe that one of the unseen problems right now is, and, and in the future is going to be very prevalent is exposure to EMF waves and that sort, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I think people are, are, are stressed to the max and they're just trying to figure out how to manage it all. And that's the number one thing I see. And, and, um, and I've figured out some, obviously there's so many ways to handle stress, but um, there's also uh, just the stress of being in your sympathetic, um, your sympathetic nervous system being on all the time, right? And so we have two states of being. We have our sympathetic on, that's when we're like, stress, got to do this, got to go here, got to go, right? That's like that feeling that we have a lot. And then the parasympathetic is this like, ah, oh, like the feeling after you've had a long bath or after yoga or, you know, when you've been reading a book in bed and you're really actually naturally going to sleep. Right. And we're all like that, that has become like the unicorn, like <laughs> that parasympathetic. And guess what? When your body's in that, in the sympathetic state, it can't heal. The parasympathetic is the rest and digest. So we need to be able to get there. 
right? Mm. So that's been sort of my mission is to help people get into that state. Wow. This is incredible. The fact that you talked about managing stress as a habit. I had never thought about it like that before, that managing stress should be a habit or it is a habit. And I had never thought about that. So yeah, um, <laughs> my, my, my mind's going in all sorts of places right now. And, and there's just like fireworks going on everywhere. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's incredible. So what, what can you advise us in terms of actually managing stress? What, what would you advise us? How can we manage our stress? Yeah. So, um, there's three main things that I would share. I mean, there's more than that, but like what I always like to tell people the 80, 20, the things that make the biggest difference for the least amount of effort and time. Cause right. We're all trying to get the most out of life. Um, so, you know, your breath, um, Breathing deeply is a way that you can instantly, I mean, we've all heard that, but it's so true. A lot of us are up here breathing super shallow. We're just like literally only using half of our lung capacity. So using your breath, do it with me right now. And hold it at the top. Like it's just, do you feel that? Just you're in your, you just switch. Oh yeah. That's like a really quick way to switch into your para. Yeah. And use that. Um, I use that before. I, if I'm feeling nervous or I'm going into something new, like closing my eyes and doing that and just getting back in tune with my body. And you could do it. I love to do it for a group. Like if I do a little workshop with someone or um, actually Robert did a workshop and I led kind of a get to know you activity. I love that's one of my like I love, love to make people feel comfortable and warm and connected so that's one of the things i'll do i'll have us breathe three breaths as a group and it's amazing by the last breath everybody gets on the same rhythm and they all just feel really connected so that, that's one um yeah i think was, everyone sorry that was incredible i mean there yeah. was I, I immediately felt a shift in my energy so yeah yeah exactly and then um so there's two I mean, there's other ones, but yeah, like I said, 80, 20, there's two supplements. I believe everyone needs to be on. Um, one of them is magnesium. We are, um, extremely, and I can, I can share these with you after the show if you want. Um, we are extremely deficient in magnesium. Magnesium is the stress. It's like the stress mineral. It's, um, it's, it actually relaxes your muscles. So, um, like from the, all the farming that's going on, like, uh, like really green vegetables, like spinach and kale and those, those eating a lot of those will increase your magnesium. Right. right. Um, also so chocolate, cacao and chocolate, um, are good sources of it, but because of all the farming practices, we're not getting as much magnesium as we used to get. Um, and so we really need to supplement it, but I believe there's a better way to supplement it than just taking magnesium. Um, it's really opened my eyes to realize how little of the vitamins and minerals we get when we digest them. We're only getting 10% because, really? yeah, because our, our the acid in our stomach and the whole digestive process. Um, and it's also like we are, you know, people say you are what you eat, but you are what you absorb. I don't know if you heard that. A lot of people say that too. So if you're only absorbing 10%, then you're, then you're making expensive pee, right? You're just like letting it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I love, um, it's called Ease Magnesium Spray and you rub it on trans, it's, you rub it on your skin and it's transdermally, your skin's your largest organ. So it goes into your skin and it can like, you can feel instant relaxation from this uh, magnesium. It's a magnesium spray. I take it with me. Um, I have like a little thing of, magnesium spray I take with me on my trips everywhere because it just, um, it'll just, and also, uh, like coffee, alcohol, certain things that we do sometimes deplete our magnesium. Have you ever had a Charlie horse? Ah, oh, no. like in your leg, have you ever had a leg cramp? Yes, or like a a leg cramp. Cramp where you're like, ah, oh, like make it stop that horrible. <laughs> yeah. This is what, this is the antidote to that. So that's um, just a, a signal from your body saying, I need more magnesium right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So I say that's a big one. And that'll also help some people who struggle to sleep magnesium. You can also get it in. Um, have you heard of like Epsom salt? Um, and you pour yes. it in your bath. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pour that in your bath uh, or Himalayan sea salt in your bath, like two cups. Soak in that. You will feel like butter. That's magnesium. Okay. Incredible. So I think, so having, um, so that's one of my weekly rituals is taking a magnesium bath. Um, Because I believe we have daily and then we have things that we should do weekly. We should really like get off the grid, right? Weekly. We should have a like bath. I mean, especially for women, like we love that ritual. It makes us, it'll make us whole again. Just give me a nice long bath and quiet and candles, right? But I think men need that too, right? And then the third thing is something I've discovered more recently, which I I, I touched on with you a little bit, but the hemp oil has been unbelievable. It's changed my life. I didn't really realize that I didn't deal with stress well. Um, I was actually in the process of doing my first little retreat last year. It was last May. And I was freaking out because, you know, I was in that state. (laughs) I was like, I have um, all these amazing entrepreneurs coming to my half moon bay to my town. They're flying there. They're and also just filling the event. Is it going to fill all the plans, making sure the chef, the menu, the food, the thing that, right. It was like all like holistic food, um, you know, amazing organic food. There's so many little logistics, right. When you're planning an event. So I was in a complete uh, sympathetic state of like complete um, stress. Right. And so I went to this other event and the whole time I was like, why am I here? I shouldn't be here. It was a paid mastermind. So I didn't want to I don't want to miss out like on something I'd paid for. Right. We've all done that. Like I'm going to go yeah. cause I paid for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. and it was two weeks from my event and this woman turned around and she's like, are you okay? And I knew she was the other, there was like five wellness people there. And I was like, how did you know that? <laughs> I'm not okay. I am trying to be present, but I'm thinking about my event and I'm like, I, so I start going off and she's like, girl, take some of this, <laughs> take some of this. And I was like, what is it? She said, it's hemp oil and it won't get you high or anything. Just, I think it'll help you. So I took it and oh my God, for me, because I was so in that heightened state of sympathetic, it totally turned me off into the para sympathetic. And I was like, oh my God, everything's going to be okay. I'm okay. It's all going to work out. It's, it's amazing. So I, that's, I, I don't miss a day without my hemp oil. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, because it just, it puts me in my body. It makes me just like, I'm just so much more secure in that everything is going to be okay in my life now. And I didn't even realize I had an issue. I It's just what I had always known, you know? So, That's incredible. Wow. I know. Yeah. I know. And it, it's not necessarily like that for everyone because I was in like this, but I believe it's a supplement that every entrepreneur should have because we all have those moments of stress that can change the course of our day. And what if there was something that just puts you back into ease instead? So that's what that is. It's crazy. Right. So is is it a, like an oral product? Like you can mix it with water or something like that or drink it from the bottle. How does it work? Um, So you you just pump it under your tongue right here and and it goes, um, it's sublingual under your, like right where your tongue is, is a really good place to have things enter your bloodstream. So um, it actually hold it there for 30 seconds to a minute. And it very quickly enters your bloodstream in like two to five minutes, sometimes quicker, depending on what's going on for you, right? If you're in a stress state, you might feel it. But um, it's also really, really anti-inflammatory and it helps, um, you know, just so many different processes. Obviously, it's we have to adhere to the supplement standard, so we can't say that it cures, heals, treats, prevents anything. But the studies, um, there's a, something called projectcbd.org. It's amazing. This is a, um, a site that's um, a nonprofit that they've just done, a, compiled a bunch of research. So that's a good place to check out the benefits. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. Definitely worth looking into. And for the audience to summarize, there were three things that Nicole mentioned. One was taking control of your breath. Second thing, magnesium. Make sure that you are eating foods like kale and spinach. And also if you need to obviously take supplements and she suggested obviously the, uh, what was it? Ease magnesium. Ease. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I'll send you some links that you can add if you want. Brilliant. So I'll put the links below in the description when Nicole sent them to me. And the final product was the hemp oil. Now I have been told by Nicole that it's not available in the UK yet, yes. but it is, it will be coming soon. So, you know, watch this space. 
We'll have you <laughs> back on when it's uh, hopefully you know available in the UK as well. And Nicole can talk to us a little bit more about that. But that sounds absolutely incredible. And thank you for sharing all those things with us. I think that's uh, that's fantastic, and I'll definitely be taking note of those things and uh, putting them into my my kind of daily practices. Awesome. Fantastic. Now, Nicole, I'm very conscious of your time. Um, I know that we, we booked a, you know, one hour time slot and we got slightly over. So I apologize. Um, yeah, it's fine. So very, very quickly, uh, I just have one final question. If you don't mind before we wrap up, um, I can see something called the life menu behind you. I'm just wondering oh. what that is because I can't read it from here, um, <laughs> but it, I, I'm very curious. I've been wondering the whole time. What is this life menu? Oh, that's so funny. Well, on my life menu, I put abundance, friendship, radiance, experience, joy, movement, yumminess, grass, putting my feet in the grass, um, feeling good in my body, the moon, uh, the basking in the sun, lifting others up, help is on the way, to be love, and a side of chocolate. <laughs> oh, okay. Chocolate. It's just a little menu. <laughs> have to remind me of the things that are important right yeah yeah and you can't leave chocolate off that list obviously no no but, i like to have a lot of visual reminders of what i want since i'm an artist i think there's some people that are really visually sensitive so i always try to have for me i am and um so i always try to have reminders of the things i love and like fresh flowers and you know i have words on my coffee cups so just things like that that remind me and keep me in that state Awesome. So this is your visual reminder for what you want your life to be like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. So there's you go. There's a, there's another incredible insight uh, for the audience that we can actually all use by having visual reminders. And uh, I never really thought about that, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Well, Nicole, it's been a pleasure to have you on. There's so many more things I wanted to talk to you about, you know, your 87 podcasts and talking more <laughs> about alignment. Um, but we haven't got the time on this show. Um, we've already gone over. So what we'll do is we'll obviously, you know, see if we can reschedule it. I'd love to have you back on if you can spare the time. Okay. I'd be happy to come on. This was awesome, Paul. This is just a gift. Thank you. No, it, it was a pleasure. So Nicole, how can people reach out to you and where do you need help right now? Mm. Let's see. So um, they can find me on Facebook. I am Nicole Keating. I'm the first one that pops up. I don't know how I got that spot, but that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and, uh, or you can email me. I'm happy to, um, I'm happy to be emailed at Nicole at the art of epic um, And also that's my, also my site. So yeah. And then what do I need help with? Um, well, I'm going to be doing uh, the Let Go Find Flow Challenge. Oh, happy full moon as well. Um, so it's going to be oh, on yeah. the next it's, full, it's moon. full moon. tonight, yeah. Yeah, we didn't even get into that side of things. <laughs> no, we didn't actually. That's the next show. <laughs> yeah, that's the next one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be running a, a free, free complimentary challenge. It's a five-day challenge. And it's because I realized on my journey um, that – you know, we tend to add more and more and more to the journey. So um, it'll be the let go find flow challenge. And I'll send you the link for that too. And if you guys want to join, that would be or share that would be where I need help because I want to I want to help as many people as possible let go of their crap so that they can have a more joyful, yummy, fun, magical life. <laughs> Awesome. And for the audience, I'll put all those links below in the description of the video. So you can go hit that link and reach out to Nicole directly. Sure. Nicole, this has been absolutely incredible. Um, there were so many things that we explored, so many things we talked about. Um, I, I love the whole thing about, you know, the daily habits and the rituals. And you shared about the three ways we can take control and de-stress and let go. And we looked at so many things that I didn't even heard of, like art therapy. I had never heard of that before. Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. And there's so many takeaways for me personally, I'm sure the audience as well, uh, including this life menu and visual reminders, which I had never thought of. And also I had never thought of, you know, dealing with stress as a habit, but certainly, you know, talking to you has, uh, has, has made me see that in a completely different light. So thank you for this. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best with all the products you're doing, including your supplement launch with hemp oil, including your book writing and your pop-up events trailer tour 
<laughs> yeah, 2009, <laughs> 2019. I, I wish I could make it all the way to the UK, but maybe we'll just have to do something over there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it, it'll be incredible if you come over. Um, I'd love to connect and I'm sure there, there are loads of people here who would love to be a part of your part of your journey. Oh, thank you. Well, this is such a such a blessing. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, like to, to share the show far and wide with my people too, because they'll love your energy as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. So guys, as always, um, this is the reason that I bring on amazing guests so we can all learn from them and follow in their footsteps and find out what it's really like to create holistic success uh, in our lives and, and achieve the same incredible results that they have managed to achieve. Nicole's story has been just phenomenal. She talked about her boyfriend passing away and how she got over that and her whole journey through personal growth, self-development and looking into wellness. And now she helps other people connect, help other people to connect them with their wellness. And it's been super inspiring. She has so much to offer, so much to give, and she's very open. And i love for you guys to go reach out and connect with her. So make sure that you reach out to Nicole, start the conversation. The links are going to be below in the description. Hit those links. Um, and I really appreciate it if you can share this conversation, because if you find value in this, I'm sure that others will find value in this as well. So share it with people that are close to you who need to hear these messages, who need to you know, hear these conversations and make sure that you also subscribe to this channel, uh, channel so you don't miss out. I can't speak at all. So you don't miss out on any of the future awesome conversations that we're going to have with more incredible guests. With that, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Hustle hard, stay awesome, and I will catch you in the next one.